Hi, this is Tom from TomBell.co. I'm just about to head out on a ride, but first I thought I'd share 15 mountain bike training tips to help you prepare for the upcoming year and have a successful season. So let's get straight into it. Tip number one is create a concentrated loop. If you want to feel more confident on race day, then here's a tip. Design a loop in your local mountain bike spot that has a concentrated collection of features that you'd find in a race. Include a few corners or berms, a steep climb and perhaps a rocky or rooty descent. You can then ride loops to dial in the sensation of riding fast on this terrain, which will really help prepare you for off-road racing when the season comes around. Number two is work on specific pedaling. What specific pedaling, you might ask? Well, pedaling dynamics are very different from discipline to discipline, i.e. road cycling to mountain biking. Mountain bikers produce power in a low cadence, high force fashion when riding off road. On the road though, most of the pedaling time will be at higher cadences, whether that's high or low force, i.e. coasting in the bunch or hitting a climb. This places unique demands on the muscles of mountain bike racers and therefore needs to be trained adequately. You can work on this in dedicated mountain bike rides or just knock a few gears down on some of your road rides. So number three is vary your training. Making sure you have a multitude of different sessions in your arsenal is key for two main reasons and those are motivation and stress. There's always more than one way to target a specific ability. So vary up your training with a few workout variations for each type of training session that you do. For example, VO2 max can be trained by longer intervals or by surging and recovering repetitively. Change things up week by week to keep your plan exciting and fresh. Number four, try out block periodization. Block periodization is the concept of developing one specific ability by blocking multiple sessions together to create a greater specific stress. The idea then is to maintain those gains. In practice, this might look like five interval sessions in the first week of a four week block, and then one maintenance workout per week for the remaining three weeks. This is in contrast to a more linear periodization model where for the four weeks, you'd have two workouts each. The benefits that result can be a greater improvement in a particular part of your mountain bike fitness and often one that's very specific and critical to race performance. I've just recently written a post on block periodization on tombell.co so if you want to learn more about this concept then feel free to head over there. Number five, mountain bike recovery rides on the road. Recovery rides are often best done on the road because of the consistent surface, gradients, etc. Try getting more time on your mountain bike simply by riding it on the road for an hour or so on a recovery ride. This gets you used to pedaling in the exact position you'd race in optimizing your muscles and conditioning your body to your mountain bike's geometry. You can also test that the gears, brakes and those kinds of things are working before you actually race. Number six is practice your race starts. If you've ever got a bad start in a mountain bike race then you'll know how frustrating and critical it can be. Even World Cup front row pros can miss their pedal and it makes a big difference to where you enter the first section of single track when the course narrows down. Practice your starts throughout the build up to the race season, starting stationary, clipping in and then initiating a sprint. This will develop your muscle memory and your reaction times. So you'll know exactly where to put your foot on the pedal by the time your racing kicks off. Number seven is ride more corners. Getting better at cornering is what we call free speed. Free speed is where you have the ability to get faster without much extra effort. And cornering is certainly an area you can capitalize on. Practice things like your line choice, your entrance speed, your exit speed, and your body position. And work on riding a wide variety of turns and berms to dial in your technique. You should find you're more confident, faster, and can make up lots of time that you'd otherwise lose over the duration of a race. Number eight is working on your vision and looking ahead. Another tactic to get free speed is to develop your ability to look ahead and scan the trail. This is something a lot of us know we should do, but don't actively practice. Try scheduling some specific technical skills rides on the mountain bike and include some drills where you practice looking further ahead down the trail. Use your peripheral vision to alert yourself to obstacles within close proximity and then use your central vision to assess what's further down the track. 
You'll be surprised how much faster you can go the more you practice. Number nine is take advantage of pump tracks. Pump tracks are fun and as a bonus can teach you how to ride more smoothly when it comes to racing. This is because the whole idea of them is to gain and preserve momentum by moving the body efficiently. Try to find a local track and develop your ability to pump generating speed through turns and over obstacles. You can then take these skills into your racing to preserve speed and momentum over technical features. Number 10 is hit the road. Now this might seem counterintuitive in a video specifically aimed at mountain bikers, but do stay with me. Essentially, you're able to perform an effort without dodging a tree, freewheeling over roots, or having to slow down into a berm. Therefore, when it's time to train some really targeted intervals, tarmac or asphalt can be the best setting for these specific intensity goals. Of course, as an XC racer, you need to balance time on the road with time spent off-road, but there's certainly a place for both. Number 11 is periodize your high intensity interval training. Periodization simply means to alter certain characteristics of your training depending on what time or period of the season you're in. Periodizing the intensity and duration of specific sessions can go a long way to helping you prepare for the season successfully. Try approaching it a bit like a funnel, where the further out you are from your goal, the less specific your training is i.e. work more on peripheral fitness and then hone in more centrally as it comes time to peak. This can be done by starting out with longer low intensity mountain bike intervals and then progressing to shorter repetitions with a greater intensity. For example, you might progress from eight minute intervals down to two or three minute work bouts as you get closer and closer to your goal events in the season. Number 12 is labeling your rides as training or recovery. So here's one tactic that I use that's really helped me be disciplined in my training, and that's using a simple labeling system. All it involves is labeling a particular day as training or recovery. When a day is labeled as training, it means that whatever I do that day has to be sufficiently challenging to cause a strong adaptive response. That could be a long ride where the duration of the ride is the challenge, it could be a very intense session, or it could mean training twice in that day to induce greater fatigue. This is a day where you are allowed and in fact encouraged to get tired. On the flip side, if a day is labelled as recovery, then the goal is clear. I do everything I can to make sure my recovery is as high quality as possible and I shouldn't be trying to build further fitness by inducing stress. Being very clear and asking the question of what today's label is before every workout, I can be very clear on what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. If you can't assign a label like this to a ride or a particular day, it may be that your plan isn't focused enough and you might be slipping into a gray area of mediocre training. Number 13 is train heavy, race light. A tactic I've seen a few top XC racers use is to train on a bike that's far heavier than the one they race on. Obviously, this can be a bit of a luxury, but even if you don't have two bikes, there are still ways around it. The idea is that when you hop on your race-ready setup on the day of competition, you feel agile, fast, and generally have a better mental experience. A lighter bike will mean you'll be climbing faster, able to maneuver the bike around more easily, and use less energy for a given task than you're used to in training. This can simply be done by adding heavier wheels to your race bike for training, where this greater rotational weight is easily the best way to add resistance. An even cheaper way of adding this extra resistance is to simply use heavier, more knobbly tires. Number 14 is include sprint training. Sprinting is something which I and a lot of XC racers forget about or at least don't do enough of in training, but it's to our detriment to not train this ability regularly. Mountain bike cross country racing has been described as a series of sprints out of corners, and it's a huge advantage to be able to lay down a lot of power from a slow speed. In this vein then, try to work on some maximal sprints on both your road and your mountain bike rides, experimenting with low cadence and high cadence accelerations. Far from just improving your absolute maximum power, it will also be effective training for teaching your muscles to overcome high levels of torque, which is something that's very specific to off-road riding and racing. So finally, number 15 is to ride multiple surfaces. 
like the very first tip of creating a concentrated loop that's aimed to make you feel more confident on race day, ensuring you ride on a multitude of different surfaces is also key. I realised this after spending the year racing across Europe and coming into contact with a wide variety of different climates and types of dirt, and it's something I'm incorporating more into my training to the best of my ability. Making sure you know how to ride in everything from mud, to sand, to dry gravel, will put you in a far better frame of mind come race day, as well as increase your speed and your competitive advantage too. Turning up the day of a race and trying to learn from scratch how to tackle an alien surface is far from ideal, and can have a large negative effect on obviously your performance, but also your stress levels as well. So I hope those tips help you in your build up to next season. If you've got any specific questions regarding mountain bike training, please feel free to drop them in the comments section below this video. Thanks again and I'll catch you on another video soon.